Hello again. Welcome to the next episode. This uh, episode we're going to talk about sin and righteousness. Now in our society today, uh, it's easily thought of as good and evil, right and wrong, black and white. It's one or the other. You're good or you're evil. And uh, in Christianity today, you, you will see that concept. Heaven and hell, good and evil. Um, or the transitioning from good to evil, like a purgatory type of idea. So, um, in the Hebrew uh, language, we don't see it quite the same way. Uh, there were different words for sin and different words for righteousness. Um, as an example, there's a word hata, hata, and that's uh, often translated as sin, and that is. Um, it's, it's related to missing a mark. Like, if you shoot an arrow and you miss the target, it's that's hata, missed. But it's also missed on the law. You, you, you failed to keep the law for some, in, for some reason, whether accidentally or by doing something, uh, you had a bad day, um, you missed the mark. You miss the, the, the standard. So that's what sin is in Hebrew. But there's another word in Hebrew translated as sin. Ava. And that means to distort. That's, all, that's also translated as sin. To distort something. To twist it. Willfully. Sin. So... There's two levels, there's two kinds of sin in the Hebrew language. Hata and Ava. There's willful and everything else. So, there's also righteousness. Uh, the common word for righteousness in Hebrew is Sadiq. It literally means righteousness. Or Sadak, he was righteous. Um... But there's another word that is sometimes translated as righteous. It's yashar. And that actually literally means straight, level. Um, it's it's a, a, you know, straight as opposed to crooked. Uh, like literally as measuring a, a board, the board is straight. Uh, but that's also, as in English, that's also used as a term to describe righteousness. He was straight. He was on the straight path. He was uh, straight with me. Uh, so that's also in Hebrew used that way. And uh, there's also clean and unclean. Um this is a ceremonially clean or ceremonially unclean that's fit to enter the temple or unfit to enter the temple. Um, holy or unholy. Um, now, the word for clean is tahar. Clean, pure. And the, the word Tame, tame is unclean, unpure. So that's a more black and white uh, uh, construct. It's you're either clean or you're unclean. You can either enter or you cannot enter. So sin makes you unclean. Either either kind of sin makes you unclean, and the ceremonial ritual will make you clean. A, a, bad, a bathing or a sacrifice or different things uh, that the priests would do or prescribe. So 
And then there's also kadosh, which means holy or sacred. Something set aside for God. It's, it's to be treated with reverence. So there's holy, there's clean, there's unclean. Now people can be clean, which is related to being holy. Um, but uh, not always necessarily directly related to the priesthood or the temple. It's just clean. You're, you're righteous. You're without sin. You're clean. You're moral. You, you haven't done anything wrong. You are uh, in good standing before God and, and all the people. It's clean. Uh, righteous. So... Now, the, the question is, is when we get into the Apostle Paul, when he says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and uh, without Jesus Christ, you cannot be without sin, and these kinds of concepts, where uh, the Jews today will say, well, that's not right, because there are many righteous people in the Bible. David was righteous. Uh, the prophets are righteous. Joseph and Mary, even in the New Testament, Joseph and Mary, righteous. So being righteous is being clean and being without sin. Because sin makes you unrighteous. So you could be a righteous person but unclean because of a sin because you missed the mark in some form. Uh, sometimes it's not always a moral thing. It, it's uh, um, sometimes by uh, touching the dead or touching blood, you would become unclean, but not necessarily unrighteous, but still not able to enter God's presence. Uh, you would have to go through a, a, a ritual cleansing before you could enter God's presence. So. So there's a lot of nuances to sin and righteousness, clean and unclean, is what I'm getting at in the Hebrew. Where in the Roman world, uh, you're either uh, guilty or innocent. You're either sin or evil. You're, I mean, you're either good or evil. So it's a, it's a more black and white scenario. And that is carried over into our culture now, where all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And people say, what? Does that mean everybody's evil? And, and Christians actually teach, yeah, that every, you're, you're born evil. And we're going to address that in this video. So we can kill two birds with one stone with Mary. So let's take a look at Mary. All right, so we see here in Luke chapter 1, okay, there in, in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah of the course of Abia and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. So that's the mother and father of John the Baptist. Okay. Now, okay. Now, further down in Luke chapter one, we also see here that the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in to her and said, "Hail, thou that art highly favored." The Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said, Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Okay, so this is um, before Jesus is born. So here's another uh, being righteous. Okay, Okay. so now if we go to Luke chapter 2, when Jesus was a child, okay, 
When the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem, Jesus, to, pre to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. All right, so Mary and Joseph take Jesus to the temple to offer a sacrifice according to the law of Moses. A pair, that's when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished. So what is this all talking about? All right, this is Leviticus chapter 12. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, If a woman has conceived seed and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days according to the days of the separation for her infirmity she shall be unclean it's got to do with touching blood and the blood of giving childbirth okay and in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised and she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying 33 days she shall touch no sacred thing nor come into the sanctuary because she's unclean until the days of her purifying be fulfilled but if she bears a woman child a maid child then she shall be unclean two weeks as in her separation and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying 66 days and when the days of her purifying are fulfilled, for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, and a young pigeon or a turtle dove. And for a sin offering, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, unto the priest. So she's got to bring... After her purification, she's been unclean, she has to bring a sin offering to cover for her sin of being unclean. See, so this is, uh, it's, it's related to missing the mark. It's not related to being evil or willfully uh, distorting something. So who shall offer it? The priest shall offer it before the Lord and make an atonement for her and she shall be cleansed from the issue of her blood. This is the law for her that has born a male or a female. And if she is not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons, two turtle doves, I suppose, or two young pigeons one for the burnt offering and one for the sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her and she shall be clean. So see, this is a, a, a woman who is righteous and Joseph is righteous, but just the act of giving birth makes her unclean and makes her impure and there is a purification process and a sin offering made to bring her back into a, a state of clean. And she's not allowed to enter the temple until this is done. So that is uh, what is recorded in Luke. So we can see here that um, it's not as black and white sin and and evil good and evil sin and guilt it's not as black and white as people tend to think so now the other thing i want to take a look at is uh 
Paul. Now, now this is comes back to Paul's teachings. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. First, I want to take a look at uh, Jesus. So there are many prophecies about the Messiah. And now we're going to take a look at Jesus as the Messiah. So here he's saying, um, the Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none delivers for a spoil and none says restore. So there's another, we'll take a look at another one here quickly. Isaiah 66. Thus says the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build to me? And where is the place of my rest? Now remember, this is Isaiah saying this. When he's saying this, the first temple is still standing. So he's saying, where can you build a house for me? So God is saying, I'm above these physical things. Okay, for all those things my hand has made, and all those things have been, says the Lord. But to this man I will look, to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembles at my word. He that kills an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrifices a lamb which is done in the temple every day, is as if he cut off a dog's neck. He's, he's prophesying of a time coming when the temple would be gone. Okay? He that offers an ob oblation as if he offered swine's blood. So there won't be any oblation. There won't be any incense. There won't be any... Um, sacrificing lambs because Jesus has become the sacrifice okay so they have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abominations I will also choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called they didn't answer so um, this is just to show sort of that there was a change that took place when Jesus was crucified and raised from the dead. This is a, a change in the policy of, of God. And this, this here, Isaiah, is prophesying that change. Okay? I will take another look here, just before we move on. Okay, here is the Jesus um, during the speech of talking to his disciples during the Last Supper. And this is uh, in the Gospel of John, chapter 16. So, Jesus talking here, he says, uh, um, It is expedient for you that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Comforter will not come to you but if I depart I will send him to you and when he comes he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not in me so you see there there's a change in policy okay that when Jesus because He's gone to death and resurrection and, and to the throne as the high priest and king offering his own blood on the throne, on the altar in heaven, as, as the book of Hebrews would, would put it. Um, so now he's, he's talking about the change, that, that what is accomplished by this. Right? 
So he's saying, okay, uh, there are bad things are going to happen and good things are going to happen. So he's saying the time is coming, whoever kills you will think that he does God's service. You see? So people who think they are doing God's service are actually against him. Um, and now that the, the Holy Spirit will come, the Comforter, and he will con convince the world of sin, righteousness, and judge judgment. Of sin because they believe not in me. So they, 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 they're convicted of sin because they don't believe in Jesus. They're convicted of righteousness because Jesus went to his Father and you see me no more. So because Jesus didn't, because Jesus, if Jesus wasn't killed, he would still be on the earth and he would be the ruler already. But they didn't believe in him and they killed him. So that's righteousness. That's the convicted of righteousness that the, the righteous ones or supposedly righteous ones who were running the temple um, gave over their righteousness to him. That, that is uh, what was accomplished. And of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Now that is the adversary. The adversary, um, you know, he's not the uh, fire and, uh, and pitchfork uh, red guy with a tail. He is actually uh, someone, he's a legalist an ultra-legalist that considers man unworthy of even being alive, uh, saying that, you know, um, man deserves to die because they sinned. So now the prince of this world is judged. Okay, so this the way this world is being run so, because God's kingdom is a hierarchy, as you'll see in the book of Daniel and in other prophets, you'll see where there, there's angels in charge of regions, the prince of Persia, the prince of Greece, and, and there's some kind of a, a confrontation happening uh, between uh, the angels of God and other angels who are opposing them. So, this is uh, the, the prince of this world is judged. So that, that, that problem has been overcome by this policy change brought about by Jesus. Okay? And he says, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that he shall speak. So uh, that would be uh, something along the lines of what Jesus does. So this is the concept that there has been this great change has happened in the way the law is um, approached or, or in a policy of of uh, enforcing the law. So the law isn't changed, but the policy has changed. So Jesus fulfilled the sacrificial law. That's why in Isaiah 66 you'll see things like, he who offers a lamb as if he broke a dog's neck. Um, that because you are, if you are offering a real lamb on a real altar, that is a rejection of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ fulfilled all sacrifice. Uh, saying, uh, turning to God and, and, and repenting and saying uh, that I recognize Jesus as the Messiah and that it is his righteousness that I depend on. That that his righteousness is what I want for myself. And, and that way you're putting him on the altar. 
in a um, in a, uh, a a symbolic manner. Okay. So now we can take a look at Paul, uh, what Paul's talking about. Now that we've sort of learned all these things. Okay, now the most common is Romans 3.23. 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of, of God. Right? Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, who God set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness, for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. This, to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believes in Jesus. Where is the boasting? Boasting about righteousness. It is excluded by what law? Of works? No, but by the law of faith. Because there's no boasting. I did this. I did that. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Your, your, your entire boast is in God, in Christ, in the righteousness of God. Okay? Now, um, so what did Paul say up here? He quotes a scripture, okay? They... Uh, says, what is Paul talking about, okay? Are we better than them, the people, the Jews he's talking about? No, we are not. For we have already proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. Okay? So why? How does he prove that? As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understands. There is none that seeks after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that does good, not one. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is in their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. So, now this is a, this is not one quote. It's it's a collection of quotes from the prophets of the Hebrew Bible. So, um, there. So he's saying, okay, Jews also can be under sin, right? Because there are times in the, in the prophets of the Hebrew Scriptures where God says, there is none righteous, not one. There's none that understands. There's none that seeks after God. They are all gone out of the way. Um, there are other times where he says, their throat is an open grave. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of ass is in their lips. There are other times where the prophets will say their feet are swift to shed blood. Another prophet will say destruction and misery are in their ways. Another prophet says, and the way of peace they have not known. So he's saying that um, the Jews are not uh, immune to sin. Okay? And they have the temple to purify themselves when they do sin. But now the temple is gone. So what is the purification from sin, from missing the mark, inadvertently sinning? Uh, maybe uh, going to a funeral. Maybe, uh, um, you know, legally under the law of Moses of, you know, inadvertently becoming unclean. What is the um, 
path to purification uh, without the Levite priests and the temple. So Paul is saying this is how um, all are under sin. He's not. He's not saying that um, because sin kind of grows too. Like when when you're in an unclean state, then it tends to lead to more and more tests and trials, which can be coming in a descending order, and like the uh, like Jesus cleaning the money changers out of the temple. It wasn't necessarily the fact that they were exchanging money, uh, people would come from for many miles and they didn't bring necessarily bring all their animals, but they would sell them and bring money. And then they would bring more Roman money and the Roman money had to be exchanged for temple shekels to be used to buy the purified animals that the temple was supplying for them. So through all this process, there was a lot of corruption and a lot of uh, money changing hands and taking advantage of the people needing to be purified. So that was the, that was the, the grievance against the money changers. So, you know, there, there's this, uh, Absolute power corrupts absolutely, and it's no different for the temple. So um, this this is what was overcome. So now each person can go to Jesus for a purification from sin. And that since Jesus has done this act of dying and being resurrected, there is no other purification. So that is what Paul is talking about. Okay? So it's not like it has always been that way. It's been that way since Jesus was resurrected. Okay? Um, the other one that people like to look at, Second Thessalonians. Let's take a look at that one. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 In a flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power So we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is me, because of your faith grows exceedingly in the charity of every one of you all towards each other abounds, so that we ourselves glory in you, in the churches of God, for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is a manifest token, because anyone who Anyone who accepts Christ and talks about Christ will endure persecution from the world, okay? That's just the way it is. That's the new paradigm. So, now that persecution and tribulation you endure is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God. You see, that in the last video I made about the 70 weeks, desolations are determined until the time of the end. So you, you're in the midst of these desolations, enduring persecution. That is so that you may be counted worthy, for which you also suffer, seeing because you're following Christ in his sufferings. You understand? It is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So God will repay them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, you rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Okay? So... This is a separation between 
the, the, the righteous and the unrighteous, the clean and the unclean, the, the, um, the sin and guilt and uh, righteousness. This is a, 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 it's a harvesting and a separating between the good and the bad that is not going to take place. It's going to literally take place after the second coming judgment, but it's taking place today in your life. And so uh, how much are you willing to seek God? How much are you willing to perform righteousness? How much are you willing to tell the truth? How much are you willing to stand up for what is right? See, these are the these are now the laws. These are now the precepts. So, you know, when people like to point, well, what about somebody who's never heard of Jesus? It's the same principle. Like Paul said in one verse, he says, a, a man who keeps the law without knowing the law is a law unto himself. So it's about um, people who are willing to stand up for what is right. And that happens in every society, everywhere. And that is being described by Jesus Christ and being initialized by Jesus Christ, but it applies to all nations. Whether they ever heard of Jesus or not, the principle still applies. If you are willing to endure tribulation to stand up for what is right, then you are following the ways of Christ, even though you may not know it. You see? Now, if you hear about Jesus and reject him, well, that's a different thing. Uh, but, you know, to be concerned with those who have never had the opportunity of hearing of him, that's different than those who have had the opportunity. And it's very important to understand these things. And it's also important for Christians to get this right. It's not so black and white. It's not so... It is kind of black and white, but it hasn't always been that way. And the, uh, the Jesus brought about a change in policy. Okay? Now, um, John chapter 14. Let's take a look at this. Okay, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know whether you, where you go. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If you had known me, you would also have known my Father. And from, from there, you know him and have seen him. From, from here forward, you know him and have seen him. So if you see Jesus, you are seeing the Father because they are of the same character. So when you judge Jesus, you are judging God because they are of the same character. You see? And here's another famous verse. John 3.16 Okay, now let's go back a bit. When Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. Okay. No man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and the men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that does truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. See, so it, it, this is the, the principle brought about through Jesus. Okay? Um, now, you will find this same principle talked about by the Hebrew prophets. Every time God, through the prophets, talks about condemnation, there's always this person, this, this, this one person that is mentioned, he. Sometimes it's just he. And it's like, if you turn to him, uh, you shall be saved. Or uh, anyone who calls upon the Lord shall be saved. There's always this, this, um, this, this, this uh, mechanism. Every time in the Old Testament prophets, when you hear all these judgments, you'll always see this mechanism of this one thing, of believing this one thing, and that is Jesus. It's like we see it in, uh, in Isaiah 66. See, here's a good example here. So, Isaiah 66, he's talking about, where is my sanctuary? What house can you build for me? And, and how sacrifices will not be accepted, no longer accepted. And it says, okay, hear the word of the Lord, you that tremble at his word. Your brothers that hated you, the ones that persecute you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified. So they think they are doing God's service by casting you out. But he shall appear, who? This, this is the he. He shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. So that, that's that what I'm talking about. There's always this he that comes up as a savior, okay? It's also about those um, mourning over Jerusalem and those who um, you know, they, they, they uphold the things of God and they mourn over the things of God not being upheld. So it's it's a it's a much broader thing than um, than cr the Christian world tends to make it, and it's also uh, much more um, nuanced than what people understand. And at the same time, it's also as narrow as they make it. So I hope this video helps to maybe uh, expand your thinking a little bit about these topics. Okay, that concludes our video for today. Thank you for watching. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next week. Thank you.